Good morning, everybody. I realize it may not be morning where you are, but uh, it's a beautiful morning here in France. So I'm continuing with the uh, reading of NLP at Work, the third edition. Um, and I'm getting feedback as I do that. And I really value that because given that I'm going to be doing the audio of the fourth edition later in the year, uh, feedback about how I do this will be very important. But at the same time, my overriding reason for reading it is so that you can engage, reconnect, or begin to learn about NLP. And one of the bits of feedback I've uh, just had was that it might be better if it was focused on the book and not on me. I quite agree with that. And the difficulty is that I'm doing it on my desktop, and that's how it's positioned. And I do want to make comments about the writing. Uh, about the book as I go. So there's the book. <laughs> um, uh, maybe I'll hold it up from time to time. And I'll keep experimenting all the time about what, what works. However, that's, I'm just going to stick with the original format for the moment. So this is the introduction to, um, so this is part one, the elements of NLP. And this introduces these sections, neuro, linguistic and programming. Now, when I wrote NLP at work, I didn't have that structure. I wasn't going to break it down in, I wasn't going to categorize it or categorize sections in that way. Uh, and it was my publisher, Nicholas Brearley, who suggested he was at that time, he worked very much with me as a developmental editor. He guided me so much in the writing um, of that book. I couldn't have done it. And this was his idea. So I take no credit. <clears throat> a lot of people like um, the fact that it is categorized in this way. And then there's the subsequent sections on all the techniques. Um, so thank you, Nick, for that um, suggestion. And at first I said to him, well, they don't categorize quite as cleanly as that. And they don't really, but nevertheless, it provides a structure. And NLP is all about structure. So I will read this bit and we'll look at the book. Uh, NLP brings together many techniques that have been around for years and it combines them with discoveries that are new. It's both the study of masters of change, some of whom are no longer alive, and it's a recognition of the talents that exist within each person today. NLP is a journey of discovery. I think that's one of the key things is that it enables people, it enables us and with others to reveal people's true talents, which often remain kind of unused, <clears throat> and not fully explored. NLP didn't evolve in a neat chronological sequence. It exploded into the world of therapy and then did the same in the world of business. And it continues to grow in part because it's an evolving subject. The form that is common to all living systems is that they make themselves. They are produced by particular elements and in turn produce other elements. It's interesting because I've just been walking around my garden and looking at um, there's a, many huge trees. And one of the trees was pollarded, you know, cut back, pruned, very, it must have been very severely at one point. And as the leaves aren't on the tree, you can see that at the moment. You can see where it was cut back um, and where all the new branches have sprung back from those. Um, kind of brutally cut back points and the tree has restored its form its shape you you can only see its shape when all the leaves are out um, but now you can see it's kind of the underlying structure the history of what's happened to it but it's regained its form that's the key thing no matter what was done to it uh, so take a compost heap and i have one in my garden the beauty of which is that it exists to support the production of the very things that make it work we put biodegradable material on the compost and that in turn is used to fertilize the production of more of that very same material plants. This is how a living system works and this is how NLP works. It's used to produce more of the elements that in turn feed the whole process of modeling. I love my compost heap. Um, I really love that process of you, know, you put back <clears throat> what it's helped generate in the first place or I give some things to my neighbor to feed his chickens. That's the other thing. <coughs> Rapport is a good example of this. When John Grinder and Richard Bandler, the founders of NLP, or the name NLP, 
first studied great exemplars in the world of hypnotherapy, they discovered that one of the things that made the difference was the quality of the rapport these therapists created with their clients. The knowledge they gained about building rapport was then used to enhance the process of modeling itself by enabling the modelers to build a trusting and respectful relationship with their clients, thereby increasing the speed and effectiveness of the whole modeling process. When I wrote the first edition of this book, oh, I'm going to talk about the structure here anyway, my publisher and I discussed in detail how I could structure the subject in a way that enables you to quickly grasp the elements and begin to appreciate and experience the power of the whole. I experimented with many approaches before we decided to use the name neuro-linguistic programming as the basis for the structure, but that's easier said than done. So that was what I was saying earlier, and this is just how I put it in the book. <laughs> the elements of NLP don't fit perfectly into categories of neuro-linguistic programming. Nevertheless, these headings act as useful umbrellas under which to introduce the subject. So I ask for the tolerance of the purists among you who could argue about the exact categorization of each of the elements. I mean, lots of people can argue about lots of exactness in things. What matters with NLP is that what you do and how you apply it work, works for you. The feedback I've received since the first edition is that readers found this structure helpful. So I've continued with it and I've expanded the content of each section. I've chosen those pieces of the subject I believe serve as a useful introduction and are most relevant to work and to ourselves in this rapidly evolving world. Initially, I did put a bit more emphasis on work than probably I would do today. I put much more emphasis on, and it always was personal, but I put much more emphasis on the personal side now. And then that, of course, you know, I believe that comes first and then that benefits the way that we work. I've written both an easy introduction to NLP and source documents for those who want support for their coaching and training. So this book contains material that forms the basis of my own NLP programs. In the last few years, many NLP trainers have told me that they use the book as their reference material for courses. And I said it before in the brief session, but thank you very much, those of you who do. I really did want it to be used in that way amongst many other ways but thank you thank you thank you and i've included some more steps for utilizing all the skills in the later chapters the first if you like technique umbrella is neuro neuro is to do with the way we use our minds our bodies and our senses to think and make sense of our experience the more awareness we've got of our way we think the more flexibility and therefore the more influence we have over our destiny. That's very significant at the moment, um, but we can influence, that's the point. I start this section with chapter two, thinking patterns. The discovery of the unique ways in which we think opened the doors to many of the models for change covered in the subsequent parts of the book. There's many books that will encourage you to think positively, to stay calm, to keep control, for example. But NLP, is, it's much more than that. It's about how to do that. That's the key. NLP is thinking about thinking. It's also about experience. And this chapter in particular will help you expand your thinking power. NLP does this not by prescribing fixed techniques that work for some, but by enabling you to explore what it is that you do when you think positively or when you stay calm and you keep control. You've got your own unique ways of doing those things, of accessing and using these kinds of resources, no matter how infrequently or how briefly you may have used them in the past. So it's really about learning for yourself. You know, the whole thing is about, um, you know, when we give a man a fish, we feed him for a day. When we teach him how to fish, we feed him for life. This is about learning how to fish. It's learning how to learn, reconnecting with how we naturally learn. That's really important. It's not about prescriptive ways of doing things. It's about how do you learn to discover the ways that work best for yourself. So once you understand the elements of your personal program, you can distill it down into the essence of its excellence. And you can run that program when you choose. This chapter 
will raise your awareness of how you do what you do, which is a stepping stone to personal mastery. Increasingly, you'll find that leadership models and models for change talk about what we call mental maps. With NLP, you can discover the nature of your own mental map and how it influences everything that you do. Also, oh, just occurred to me though, somebody said it should focus on the book, like turn the audio off. You don't have to see anything actually. You don't have to see anything. Also in the neuro section is chapter three, filters on your world. The filters through which we experience the world govern our perception of situations and people. So for example, you know, if I filter for what's wrong, what's not working, I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna have a particular perception of the world. If I filter for what's right, I'm gonna get quite a different perception and feeling about the world. Um, so by recognizing these filters, we can capture what it is that we and others are doing and thinking and achieving the results that we do. And we can understand more about our ability to relate to the very unique styles of other people. So for example, have you noticed how in some situations, some people talk about what's different about ideas and proposals, whereas other people search for what they like and how these ideas compare to similar ones that they've experienced. And have you ever experienced people who are inspired by a vision of the future, trying to get through to others who prefer to dwell on the problems? We need to learn how to accept all the differences and similarities that exist between us if we are ever to exist in a unified world. This is the opportunity we have now. Chapter four, which is called Thinking with Your Body, is a central part of NLP and still draws and, and this is important it's not just about how we think about things you know nlp is about our whole experience whole body it still draws the greatest interest in those embarking on this study of human behavior of body language this is an important chapter as many people have come across more traditional theories of body language where you know as example um you know i remember being taught that if somebody scratches their nose you know does that really cause you can't touch your face up um, it means you're lying and folding your arms means you're defensive. Well, NLP offers a very different kind of understanding, one that is unique to the individual and respectful of the person. It doesn't put gestures into predetermined boxes, but it enables us to develop the subtlety of calibrating our own body language and that of each person we meet, no matter what the context of the communication. So in that chapter, in this chapter, you will learn how to recognize different patterns in behavior and consequently different patterns in thinking. In this way, you can improve the way that you communicate with anyone in any situation. And then under the heading, the third one, linguistic, there's chapters on enriched communication, metaphor, precision questions, and hypnotic language. For those of you who need to picture the book again, there's the book. <laughs> uh, all of these got new material in and a completely new chapter. This was in the third edition on clean questions. The addition is significant. Clean language is a discovery that was the product of modeling a remarkable therapist, David Grove, who I had the absolute honor and delight of experiencing uh, in person. A remarkable, such a talented, such a skilled guy. So clean questions are designed to work. And that clean questions wasn't the only thing. It was just one little part of what he was doing and constantly evolving. Clean questions are designed to work only with clients' way of experiencing the world and the symbols that they use to code that experience. It's one of those elements that became integral to the whole process of modeling, a vital part of that fertile compost heap that I mentioned earlier. If you were only to read one chapter, read this one, the clean language. You'll go a long way with the learning that we have the fortune to benefit from here. He died quite young, he died in his 50s, which is tragic. And fortunately, um, a couple, Penny Tompkins and James Lawley, had modeled him, studied what he did, because otherwise, a lot of what he had discovered would have died with him. The ways of using language to facilitate change formed a large part of the early work of John Grinder and Richard Bandler, the founders of NLP. In business, language is one of the most readily available forms of influence. When you're aware of your language patterns, you can use each of your senses to enrich your language and bring it alive. 
with precision questions, you can learn how to generate quality information, the lifeblood of business. Precision questions are also undoubtedly one of the most powerful tools for challenging the constraints that we create for ourselves. Precision questions exist to reconnect us with our sensory experience. And I've used, taken a lot of tech, technical terms out of um, this writing. So in the precision questions, some of you who've studied NLP will know that the material that's in that chapter is being called the meta model. The section of this book on language now covers the remarkable range of questions and prem premises on which we can work both with ourselves and others to discover the excellence that exists and to facilitate change. The questions aren't reserved for the world of coaching and change. Learning language patterns and ways of responding to them will support you in achieving excellence in the way that you communicate, the way you build relationships, the way you lead, present, negotiate, manage conflict, show respect, learn and of course model in NLP terms and much much more. In my quest to promote NLP in the world of work and personally I initially played down the role of hypnotic language. I wanted to concentrate on how we could make the unconscious conscious rather than promoting the use of working with trance but I've moved on since then. Business has moved on and I think there's now a much greater understanding that hypnotism is more than a stage performance. My aim in including this chapter is to help you realize just how much we're influenced by the hypnotic language that's around us every day. And through, and whoa, we certainly are, it's just huge now. And through this awareness, how we can learn to use this language to good effect. Many, so I think that's one of the prime things is be aware of how this hypnotic language varies. Uh, how can I put, well, it's very influential and used to not all good ends by any means. Many of the techniques that are essential to business and our personal development rely on our willingness to draw on our unconscious mind and hypnotic language is a way to work with that. So to make room for the new material, I took out one of the original chapters on meta messages. I've actually put it back in the fourth edition. So I realized how important it was. Now, I've once more expanded the programming section of the book to reflect the increasing importance and interest in this, the heart of NLP. The knowledge and skill that exist in NLP in, in business have grown significantly since the last edition of this book. I've got more delegates for advanced levels of training than ever before. Most companies, most people have a significant population of NLP practitioners and master practitioners. The level at which I start my training these days is well beyond what I would have done some years ago. So the realization that modeling, like studying excellence, is really what NLP is all about, is reflected in my new chapters, developed chapters on modeling and strategies for successful living. I had feedback that many readers didn't really get what, what's called the tote model, um, which is chapter 11 in this book. So I rewrote it. It's too important for it not to be understood. And I'm going to do one of my short broadcasts on that quite soon because it's so essential. It's the way we live. So all of the elements of NLP can be used in different ways. As independent techniques, they will enable you to improve the quality of your relationships and gain greater control and choice over the way you live your life and the results you achieve. Additionally, even though many of these elements were discovered through the process of coding excellence, they are now also used to enhance the quality of the coding process itself. So, for example, your awareness and understanding of the finer distinctions in language and behavior will enable you to elicit and refine the essence of excellence in the models of excellence you choose to study. It's like the more distinctions we've got, the more we can manage, the more we can um, code, and therefore, uh, I guess, influence the way we're doing what we're doing. There are many ways of teaching NLP. There was a time when I knew most of the NLP trainers running certification courses. There's now thousands and thousands with a multitude of styles and emphases. So what I have, I think my own style is quite different to many. Um, 
And the way I've written this book is to reflect my own style, my passion for the integrity and the accessibility of NLP. I've been described as an NLP junkie, not for some time, actually, uh, in that I don't just write about NLP and teach it. I aim to live it. I, I am told I live it. I think I don't always appreciate how much I do, but there's no doubt about it. And especially in the times that we're in today, um, I wouldn't be coping with what's happening if it wasn't for all of this incredible learning that I've had over the years. I believe we were born to aspire to our excellence, our true potential, and NLP is a part of the route to achieving that. So what I offer here is my truth. If it inspires you to find yours, then all will have been worthwhile.